So, hello to the Foodstar webinar series. Today's webinar uh, is on innovations in traditional foods, uh, the good practices in this field. The webinar is organized by the EU project Foodsta in cooperation with the Iseki Food Association. Uh, today's presenter is João Goncalves uh, from SPI Portugal. He also presented the webinar two days ago. And uh, my name is Vilička Gočeva. I'm from University of Food Technologies in Bulgaria. I will be moderating the webinar today. Uh, so I will we start first with today's agenda. Uh, I see it's taking a little for the screen to load, so we wait. I'm sorry for this, some kind of problem with the internet connection. So we get delayed slides. <coughs> so, okay, we have it now. Uh, today's agenda. First, I'll give you a very brief introduction how to use your control panel for the webinars. Then uh, we will introduce the Foodstar project uh, from which series are the webinars. Uh, then we have uh, the presentation from Joao. And uh, I will explain how you can uh, ask questions. There are two ways to ask questions in written form during the presentation and after, or oral by hand raising. Uh, after uh, the webinar, you will receive a feedback form, which we would very much appreciate if you return to us. Uh, in this evaluation form, we would ask you to rate the degree of interest to the topic, the audio quality, the overall quality of the presentation. So, I hope you give us your opinion. And uh, now a few words about the uh, control panel of the webinar platform. So this is what you see. Here is the field in questions where you can write your questions or comments. Okay, this is the field. <coughs> Then, with this uh, red and white arrow, you can minimize your panel so that you can see fully the screen. You also have the button for full screen, which now appeared on your screens, and you can press on that button to see the full screen. And below, you have the virtual raise hand button. If you press on this button, I can see that. And I will unmute your microphone so you can talk directly to our audience or ask questions directly by your microphone. This button, you basically don't need to use because uh, um, during the session all microphones are muted so we avoid any background noise. And during the session all microphones are muted and the session will be recorded. So uh, this recording will later be available on the Foodsta uh, web page and uh, you can see it again. So first, a few words about the EU Foodsta project. This is uh, the abbreviation. Okay, let me wait a little for the screen to load. I'm sorry for this. So the EU Foodsta webinar, uh, the EU Foodsta project is uh, an abbreviation for European Food Studies Training Alliance. It's an Erasmus Plus 
Plus uh, Knowledge uh, Alliance project and it started in 2015 So, the project is about universities and food industry and the differences, how to overcome the differences between them. Okay, just a few seconds for the screen. I'm sorry, it takes forever to load, but hopefully it will happen soon. Okay. So what happens is that universities are focusing on research mostly and they are looking for fundamental mechanisms and for publications, while the industry is focusing on practical applications and uh, finding solutions as quick as possible. It's also focused on the IPR and time constraints are very critical for, for the food industry and as you see there are there is a huge gap between the universities and industry. That is why the, the aim of this project is to close the gap. This is the vision of the food star. And uh, the way that this is planned to be done is through finding long-term long partnerships on the European level uh, between academy and industry and uh, Start Swim is aiming to do that with uh, formulating very clear and simple goals and also the consortium is trying high expectations Okay, waiting again for the slide. <clears throat> so, uh, in the European Food Stop project, seven universities are involved uh, together with three food companies and 11 multipliers and uh, training providers. So the consortium, in the consortium, the seven universities that are involved are Boku from Austria in Vienna, Agro Paris Tech in France, IPC in Portugal, UCP again in Portugal, uh, University of Hohenheim in Germany, the University of Leeds and uh, UNITE in Teramo, Italy, and, and the food companies which are involved are first Fruact from Portugal, GB Foods from Spain and Nestle. And the next groups of uh, the next group of uh, participants in the project are the multipliers and training providers. We have 11 partners. In this group, the LVA from Austria, Actia in France, Federal Alimentare 
federal feder alimentare sorry for this in Italy Ania in France FIAP in Spain SEFT FIPA from Portugal and uh, we have also four associated partners the first one is the Iseki Food Association uh, the target group are teachers here then the EFOST and SPACE target, uh, the target group uh, of FOSTIS industry and SPES and Tiroika have as target group students in university administration. So the one of the aim of the EU Food Star project is to establish an independent platform which is called the a food star center okay waiting a little for the slide for you to see because it's delayed yes here it is so the EU Food Star Center is aimed to be an independent platform with physical hubs in different regions for international and sustainable collaborations between industry, academia and other stakeholders in the food sector and uh, the goal of the consortium is that this platform with the hubs survives beyond the end of the project so it's uh, sustainable in future so if you have any questions regarding um, the EU Food Star project you can visit the project or if you would like to have uh, suggestions for other topics uh, that are delivered to you please uh, send them to uh, the email you see office at Taiseki Foodnet we'll be very happy to uh, work together on future webinar topics and now I will present our lecturer today Joao Goncalves who is an international consultant at, at uh, SPI in Portugal uh, we have a very experienced uh, presenter today with, uh, who has been a project officer and uh, fields of now and place and policy and management in uh, entrepreneurship support policy and planning support and also um, on lifelong learning programs he has also in Brussels uh, on how to develop uh, applications and project management skills. Mm, he also has a degree in urban and regional planning from the University of Aveiro, a postgraduate degree in development policy and innovation. In uh, Joao started with an R&D researcher in the University of Aveiro uh, with a range of projects and publications in the field of uh, spatial planning, place-based innovation and ICT taker. And in 2008, Joao Goncalves was uh, uh, offered to join uh, his university rectorate as project officer and uh, he is responsible for nurturing and developing university business and local government partnerships which then translated into several regional level projects. So he will share his uh, experience on uh, how to do innovation in the field of traditional foods. I think many countries in Europe have uh, a problem with uh, how to revive the sector of traditional foods which is very important. and uh, the way to do it would be exactly innovation I'm sorry it takes a while for the screen to load
Hello, Joao. Hello. So, um, I will begin my presentation under the title Innovation okay. Traditional Food Good Practices. I hope you are seeing my screen. Yes? I will. I'm trying to see. Mm. At this point, I can't, I can't uh, see what is on the. I see it, yes, yeah. so it okay. should be working. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I will yes. can begin my presentation. I hope it's uh, not so slow as the, the program here. Um, I'm just going to do a brief presentation of uh, the, tr the project that is, is uh, on the base of this presentation that I'm doing. Uh, it was prepared under the Trafoon, a, a project called the Traditional Food Network to improve the transfer of knowledge for innovation, uh, an European project funded by the seventh research and development framework of the European Commission. It, it's a project that already ended, but there were a, a, a number of results um, and that we are trying to, to explain in, in the webinars in, in collaboration with the FUDSTA. Uh, just some of the, the results of this project. Um, an inventory of needs of SME in the traditional food sectors. Associated 55 training workshops in 13 European countries. A strategic research and innovation agenda and the, the book that you are seeing in, on the screen, a consumer-oriented book containing information about traditional recipes and products. So we, we tried to, to finish the project with a collection of uh, a number of uh, traditional food and recipe throughout Europe, including Portugal, Bulgaria, Germany, Sweden, etc. All the information uh, re as a result of the project is available in the Trafoon website, or more precisely, the Trafoon information shop, and is available in English, German, and French. So you have, you have the website uh, there. And this is just what I'm mentioning, that uh, we, we, the, as a result of the Trafoon, we would like to, to, to use the results and have a, a clear impact in the SMEs of Europe. Just also a brief uh, mention of my own company, which is called Sociedade Portuguesa Inovação. Um, it's a consultancy from Portugal, international firms. We have offices throughout the world, as you can see in the map there. We basically manage projects which foster innovation, entrepreneurship. We promote international opportunities and strategic partnerships. So we can see the relevance of our work to the project and this webinar uh, itself. We work mainly in the areas of innovation, science and technology, and territory. So if you like more information, you just go to the, the, web, the link over there. So let's go finally to um, the, the webinar, the, the, my presentation. This is just the outline. Uh, I shall begin uh, to talk a bit about the current situation of SMEs in Europe and the need to look for good examples or solutions to, to the current problems. Secondly, I shall delve very, very briefly into the definition of innovation, taking from the Oslo manual. This will be important to introduce the four cases I have for you, and this is the, the three topics that I'm going to structure the presentation, uh, introduction to the companies and, and products, uh, talk a bit about the innovation that is entailed, and some lessons or reflections that we took from each example. And finally, we're going to take some practical conclusions in the end. So, concerning the, the current situation of the SMEs, just very, very briefly. Um, as you know, uh, small and uh, medium enterprises of the food sector are under pressure due to open markets, demand of standardized and price competitive uh, products from the consumers, uh, rising importance of large retailers that sometimes they, they set the prices, and also governmental regulation. And so it's Completely, it's increasingly more difficult to attend to these regulations. So, as a result, there is a risk of losing many traditional foods and techniques of production, but also processing, preservation, packaging, which can be lost in this process of uh, competitiveness. To make worse, we believe that these techniques mostly have a role in their, their own cultural identity of each region. So, we have a challenge in our hands 
and among other responses, producers and sellers of traditional foods must adopt a more modern or competitive marketing skills and production techniques. So this presentation hits this, this need and consists of a number of examples of entrepreneurship that we have collected throughout the Trifun project. Why? Because we feel that presenting actual examples to, to entrepreneurs, to other businessmen, is more likely the ideal way to take our message across to other entrepreneurs regarding what is possible or not to be done in, in the sense of new methods, attitudes that turn an interesting idea into a successful business in, the, in this traditional food sector. Uh, so what do you, we mean by traditional food? Well, very basically that it's produced according to the gastronomic heritage of each region or uses traditional ingredients or as a traditional composition in the method. It can also be associated with a certain local area, region or country. Before going to the examples, let me just mention a bit of what we understand about innovation. Uh, following the, the Oslo manual, which is the reference in these cases, and innovation is something that fits into one of the four different categories. Uh, product or service innovation, which is a good or service that is new or significant, significantly improved. A process innovation, so we mean a, a, an improved production or delivery method. A marketing innovation, which is basically a, meth, a, a new marketing method involving uh, significant changes in product design or packaging, product placement, product promotion or, or pricing. This we mentioned the, the, the seven P's of the marketing mix. And also finally, uh, uh, organizational innovation, which is a, a method, a new method in the business practices workplace organization or a, a way of dealing in external relations to the customer. So now that we set aside all the definitions and boundaries, let me go through the examples that we have chosen. I, we have chosen four cases. We have nine collected throughout Europe. And these four cases are closely more linked to the four types of innovation I just, I just introduced. So uh, the first example from the a farm in the central uh, Italy called Orti della Valle della Carpina. It's a farm founded by Maurizio Carbini, which had a desire to offer, uh, he had a deep appreciation of the, this country, and he had the desire to offer the naturalness and authenticity of organic farming. So inspired by his own roots, he decided to produce uh, high quality products himself using natural methods that he, he heard uh, throughout his family, and that would also contribute to preserve and improve the local environment. The farm is located in the pristine Carpina Valley of Pietra Lunga. I can show some, some pictures of this valley. There is a really a lovely place, I recommend. And it's also a protected area. So the, all the construction, all the, the protection of the, the natural environment is mandatory in this region. So uh, what, what does it do here? Of course, there are a number of traditional local products in the region, and in this case, the, the farm, Orti, produces several products all certified as organic or, or linked with a rediscovery of ancient varieties of local products, sometimes with also with nutritional or health benefits. For example, Orti was involved in certification and the rediscovery of a local product called the white potato of Pietra Longa, uh, which is right now certified with the Denominazione Comunale d'Origine, which is the municipal designation of origin. So the company commercializes two categories of products, organic or truffle-based products. Uh, we are talking about traditional vegetables and fresh fruit such as beans, even saffron, linseed, linseed oil, the mentioned white potato of Pietra Lunga, a purple potato, a very beautiful potato, grain, black summer truffle and black truffle. These are some of the, 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 the packages of the products that they sell and that I've just mentioned. 
there is the organic purple potato, which is very strange for us outside the region, of course. So, uh, what is what is the innovation of this this company? Well, of course, Orti de la Valle del Capina produces first-class organic products in a cross-section between agriculture and culinary traditions and a more modern view of the market. The production stems from a desire to recover ancient flavors and ancient recipes. The, the owners are trying to revive varieties which were either lost or, or, or that present exceptional qualities, the example of the purple potato, for example, but also they try to cater in a modern way to the to, to the market. So, for example, the purple potato has cosmetic uh, properties. So they are trying to to involve the, the cosmetic market with this new uh, organic product. Furthermore, the, the, they are involved in cooperating with local entities along the value chain in entirely local basis, which both benefits the local economy, but also is able to create a unique product in the market, in the European market. There is no other uh, uh, way to produce such a product that is based locally. And there are also marketing innovations. The, the, the products are directly sold and at markets and fairs, both loose or, or packaged. They also uh, intend to build their own packaging laboratory and warehouse. So, reflecting a, a bit about this case, we got to the conclusion that they, they were able to differentiate the product coming from the history and traditions of the land, this special land in central Italy. They have also have a close connection with the region and its people. So, the company is able to achieve both other producer trust and cooperation in a clear win-win situation for all. There was a clear identification of needs and opportunities of the consumers. So the, the, the producer didn't just decide to produce these products, but he did a market review and is permanently assessing it, so to allow for a goal readjustment in case it needs to. There, there is also the importance of communicating with other companies, organizations, institutions, to both showcase its products, to market the, the products, but also to broaden support, for example, in terms of uh, uh, regional funding for this kind of developments. So, the second example that we bring to you comes from Belgium, Leuven to be precise. It's called Aqua 4C, or the, the brand is, is called uh, um, Omega, Omega Bars, it's a Dutch name. So, um, it's an aquaculture startup originated from a PhD research project of Stein van Hustenberger at the University of Leuven. It's a fish farm intent, that intends to bring a new type of fish to the market through uh, what he calls an eco friendly breeding process. In other words, it means that Aqua 4C is producing a fish called the jade perch in closed recirculation systems where the energy and the water of the farm is integrated with a neighbor tomato greenhouse called Tomato Masters. So you see there in the picture the white Tomato Masters explore, exploration, uh, the greenhouse, and then in red the, the place of the the aquaculture uh, site. So, there is there are a lot of novelties in the process of, of uh, growing this fish. I will just describe a bit about this process. So, how does it work? So, Aqua 4C installed 24, 27 tanks next to Tomato Masters using approximately 30 hectares. Uh, the process of fish breeding and tomato cultivation, cultivation are interrelated. So, uh, you can see in the, in, the, in the drawings there, that first the rainwater falls on the roof of the greenhouses and is used to fill the breeding tanks. The water then uh, from the fish farm is purified and as a nutrient enriched water is transported back to the greenhouses where it is used to grow the tomatoes. 
The water is subsequently filtered and evaporates through the tomatoes, which means that no wastewater is produced. And the farm can use less water and fertilizers. The tomato farm also, in turn, distributes its surplus electricity to the fish farm, where it can be used uh, for heating, for example, which in Belgium is important in the winter. Just some numbers, the, this startup set up its operation in 2015, so two years ago, and they, it produces 200 tons of fish per year in order to achieve an annual turnover of 1.5 million euros. The cost uh, to launch the project back in 2015 was 3 million euros and was financed from investments of 25 local partners, including the university, banks and business angels. Let me show you just the products, what we are talking about. That's the, the Jade Perch, and that's the, in the, on the right there is the Cooked Jade Perch, which the brand is called Omega Bars, Omega by the Omega-3 um, uh, properties of this fish. It, it's a, uh, the fish is a white flesh fish with a oily texture, a bit like salmon, and the, the, the owner says that it, it it's very well used in Asian style dishes because it uh, absorbs other flavors very well. So what kind of innovations are we talking about? Well, this is clearly a result of an, uh, an R&D project. The, the company was a spin-off uh, of the University of Leuven and the, of a project in the University of Leuven where it was studied the possibilities of using organic farms to grow a healthy, sustainable but also tasteful alternative of fish. In fact, the, the research led to the, to, to the plan to grow the jade perch, a new species for the European market with some special ecological features. Uh, the fish is vegetarian but also does not require antibiotics and it comes from uh, Australian habitats, so it's capable of surviving in more austere conditions with less water. So the main innovation here is simply delivering at the commercial scale an efficient and sustainable system of aquaculture and horticulture working aside for mutual benefit. Uh, I have to say that Aquafor-C uh, may have its roots on, on research but it's today an equivocally commercial enterprise. In truth, the ecological aspect is not as evident on its, in, in its website, but is in the, 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 the fact that it lowers the cost of production is emphasized more than the ecological aspect of it. So some reflections about this example that we, we took is that there are some lessons about the early development and growth of a startup, but basically we, we wanted to, to, to highlight that the main issue is that there was an identification of challenges and opportunities, in this case the over-exploitation of, of the oceans, which means that uh, the current demand for fish is unattainable, unattainable for capture alone, so there is an opportunity for aquaculture. And there is also a problem, how can we lower the, the costs of uh, producing a fish that is ecologically sustainable and has a, a distinct uh, properties such as the jade perch? So there was an inclusion of scientific knowledge from the university, a transfer of knowledge and technology. There is also uh, involvement of other startups in the company. The collaboration with the adjacent uh, tomato farm is obviously a win-win situation. There is a huge runoff of water that can be used in, in, the, in the fish farm next door. They also make optimum use of en energy and nutrient, reducing the, both the ecological impact and the cost of the factors. There is also the, the capacity from the, the, the farm to demonstrate a fish that was not known, the jade perch, the, they, they produced recipes, they went to fairs to demonstrate the, the benefits and the taste of this fish to unknowing customers. Um, the third example is a different example, it's called Landpack, the green packaging solution. 
So Landpack is a small business-based engineering company founded also uh, in 2013 and it, it intends to meet the needs of fresh and cooled food suppliers. So let me explain how it works. The, the, the owners understood that the, the supermarkets face the problem of how to get the refrigerated fresh deliveries to the customers, to special customers and shops that specialize in organic products. So they, they, these, 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 uh, these customers did not want the plastic in their, their uh, um, packages. So how can we develop an ecological package available in the market? There was no, no alternative to the polystyrene boxes. So Landpack developed a complete range of straw-based products. You can see the, the picture there of the tractor collecting the straw. A, a renewable source with great installation properties. <clears throat> In the production of eco-friendly plant-based in installation, no chemicals of any kinds are used, which makes the straw as pure as possible for the, these uh, special customers for this, this, with special needs with particular needs, I should say. So, uh, Landpack establishes close collaboration with local farmers and supervises every process step to be able to supply, to have a, a, a certified supply to the customers, starting at cereal growth, harvesting and straw processing. They do not grow the grain, but uh, uh, they outsource it with, with uh, other farmers, which, which provides these farmers supplementary income, because straw would be basically be thrown away. Um, after two years working on product and process development, both innovative, Landpack has started sales in partnership with Klingele, one of the Germany's leading independent manufacturer of uh, corrugated raw paper and packaging in cardboard. And this is the, the product that we, we have collected. The, in the upper right is the land box, which is the, the, what, what I was mentioning, the ecological packaging box made of pressed straw. And in, in the outside, there is the card box produced by the, the par partner company. So uh, land box is an ecological packaging box made of pressed straw with ideal characteristic for, for refrigerated food distribution. Um, the whole packaging concept uh, protects resources but also saves trouble with disposal. Landbox, the, the upper right box there, is specially designed to meet the needs of, of those dispatching fresh or chilled food, I mean fish, meat, dairy products, uh, breakery products, as well as heat or even shock sensitive goods, which represent a clear alternative to polystyrene. The company also provides a comprehensive service package for a simple and trouble-free trouble -free food delivery, including the exact determination of uh, the cooling elements, a uh, time temperature control, uh, cust uh, it allows customization in terms of shape, size and design, as well as there is, it provides advice on legal requirements on transporting goods. So there is really a, a full service package together with the product. So what about the reflections? So land park pack is clearly positioned in a competitive industry, but is still an example of a successful business venture that has achieved a, a, a good position in, in our view. So uh, there was identification and characterization of a real need, so there is a need to dispatch fresh food to these particular customers. There is also uh, the product, the straw, that could solve this problem. So they did this through market analysis, knowledge of customer requirements, and these were the fundamental aspects of, of the final solution that was achieved. Again, there was also a strategic partnership with a packaging company for the, 
that enable the co-development and commercialization of the products and services. As I mentioned, there is the usage of leading ICT applied to the interaction between user and equipment, which is why there is an iPad there in the picture. And there is also something we call innovation by design, which is the result of design consideration in a traditional area, which led to new ways of approaching the materials and the, the products, the, the, the straw in this, in this case. Finally, the, the example we bought is called Lia. It's an extra virgin olive oil coming from Greece. So Lia is a company recently founded which produces premium olive oil from the area of Messenia in Greece. The trees belong to a Korokaneki variety, which is a native one in Greece. It's a, a traditional tree in Greece. So the olive oil that they produce is fruity, bitter, and has a pungent taste and flavor and a very low acidity. And this is the, the package of the Lea olive oil. It's a really special bottle. So you can see that this is a marketing innovation. It's a matte white bottle that uh, the owner say it stands as an art piece by itself. It's, it, uh, it intends to achieve simplicity and purity through a clean form color palette, just white and a bit of, of brown. We'll also see that there is some relation between this, this design and the classical Greece. So the main innovation in this case is obviously uh, a combination of traditional methods of cultivation with modern techniques in order to respect the quality of the product, the, the, of the, 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 the olive oil. In this sense, the product has achieved a number of, of prizes. I have it here, the, the Great Taste 2014, Best Olive Oil in the World 2015, uh, and the International Olive Oil Competition 2015. But there is also, of course, the, ma the matter of the white bottle design, which is indeed special. And I think it's connected with the quality that is the, the, inside. So here is what the, the owner has to say about it. Uh, very contemporary and chic, yet rich in tradition and cultural history. Of course, they have received a lot of attention based on their innovative design, but also the olive oil inside has extra benefits, uh, so it's worthy by itself. Uh, they, at the moment of the study, they were present in shops in France and Belgium, and they were negotiating with shops in the Netherlands and Germany, so they were not uh, in the region selling in Greece itself, they were uh, in other parts of Europe as well. So uh, some reflections about this, this, this case. Of course the brand and packaging design for Lea olive oil is the standout feature, essentially related to the uniqueness, it's a really unique bottle. Of course the oil is of great quality and the connection to the land is, is paramount. The, the olives grow in a picturesque provincial town in Greece and inspired by this, the company created a modern brand that embodies the, 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 land, the land's tradition of growing olive oil and growing olive trees as well. So it refers to a traditional way of producing olive oil a mill, mill, with millennium. The logo itself I have to say, refers to this traditional way. They, they say that multiplying the logo creates a pattern which is used to decorate the packaging. Let me show you again the, the, the logo, it's there on the upper right. So they use it to, to decorate the packaging and it resembles a bit the way in ancient times, in ancient Greece, they used to decorate the objects. So as I said, there is also the, 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 the case that the company has a constant focus on export business and an ambition to scale. Unlike uh, traditional olive oil producers in Greece, LIA has a website and other marketing materials in English. And the owner tra owners also travel regularly in Europe in order to meet customers or uh, partners, other uh, business partners. 
So after presenting this, this four examples, we can draw uh, some uh, conclusions about what constitutes a good uh, cases for, for uh, growing, for building a, uh, a business in traditional food. This is only just a few ideas, of course. Uh, first of all, we have to say that producers try to escape competition by exploring upscale markets, both in terms of the sophistication of the product and pulling the sustainability uh, lever. So how did they do it? They First of all, they looked at the market and looked for problems and thought about solutions to those problems. So it was a very direct, and you can really see the, the logic uh, that they, they, they pursued. So they identify needs and opportunities, but they don't, didn't do it just once, they are doing it constantly. They're always thinking about their own business, uh, business case. So there is a need to constantly assess and adjust business goals. When the solutions were not obvious or needed extra study or extra information, extra knowledge, of course they, they, you have to, to look for R&D. They are partners, they, they can help you in uh, uh, reaching uh, interesting solutions for the problems that you, you see. And also this also goes through the, all, the, the, all the, the four cases, they are connected with the land. They looked into their own history and traditions for ways to differentiate the products in the market. They also developed partnership with other farms and organizations to build products that people value more. They looked for win-win situations, looked for allies. And also they demonstrated the capacity to, to gain, to, to showcase their, their, their products to other people to sell their products. And finally, this can't be overstated, that they also thought about the other components of competitiveness, the design, the package, the communication, and the brand, among other issues. So this is my presentation for you today. So I'm uh, open for any questions that you might, might have. Thank you very much, Joao. And uh, we have a comment from our colleague Harris Galanakis. He's um, uh, the coordinator of the Waste Utilization Working Group in the Iseki Food Association. So he says, great presentation as well, very informative. And uh, he's very interested in connecting innovations with traditional foods. So he's offering to you to have a look at uh, uh, their book, Innovation Strategies in the Food Industry, chapters 4 and 5, and uh, he will contact you for some further collaboration. So I think you can work together very well, uh, because I know also Harris, so it's a great connection. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And I would love to ask our audience if any of you would like to ask some questions or share your thoughts or uh, give comments on today's presentation. I would say these were very good examples of how things can work. Uh, we have a question from Olivier Boucherie. He says, thank you, Joel, for this very interesting presentation. And he says, why do you consider those aqua for sea and land pack as traditional food? Well, this is the matter of the, the entrepreneur itself. He says that it's a Belgium uh, dish. It's a Belgium way of uh, producing fish. It's a, Bel a Belgium uh, eco-friendly way of breeding the fish and the process, so he relates a lot his own production to the traditional food in Belgium. Okay. The, the, the innovative way is the process that he's making this process, the, this fish. Okay, and uh, you have uh, uh, a 
comment from Dimitri Saltas, uh, who is saying, excellent presentation, thanks. Also from Bogdan Radoy, he says, thank you for the presentation, it's very interesting. So, I think uh, it's been very interesting for all of us, because uh, right now all European countries, I think, are struggling with uh, how to improve their traditional foods market and how to give a better sustainability to our uh, to our uh, smaller uh, to our um, smaller towns and smaller villages. Uh, also, you have a congratulations for a great presentation from Kyrgyz Lucian. And uh, Dimitri Salsas is asking if I uh, can have the PDF of the slides. So I would say that uh, the PDF of this presentation and the video will be posted in the uh, Foodsta, EU Foodsta uh, website. So you can all uh, visit the EU Foodsta website and uh, you can find both the PDF and the presentation there. They are freely available. And you have also thanks from Despina, Bozudi, from Jonas, Geza, Heg. Not sure if I pronounce it well. Uh, and Bogdan is asking if uh, there will be another presentation about this topic in the future because it's very interesting and they would have more interest to see, to hear more about this. What do you think? Well, um, maybe Footstar, I don't know the, the agenda of Footstar webinars. In, in our part, there will be another, uh, I think that's 16th of March, about how to develop new products. So they, my, my colleagues from SPI will explain uh, a methodology called the new product development from the from the market assessment to the final product product uh, concept, uh, it's not about good practice, but there will be one good practice to to exemplify the methodology. And it's also related to today's topic because yeah. uh, okay, innovation is still even in traditional foods we need some new elements. So that would be a good a good ex uh, example also. And uh, you have. Thank you for a great presentation from Natalia Sokolova and she is asking if you have any research about cereals, about uh, cereal based foods? We have a Portuguese um, case study about a, a very traditional mm -hmm. cereal that we have here. I didn't put it in this presentation. I, I can link it afterwards or maybe link it to the um, to the Trafoon website where there is the, the full list of, of good practices. Oh, that will be, I think. Uh, I will leave it also in the presentation or, in the end. Oh, great. Great. I think it will be very useful for our um, colleagues. And um, you have um, a comment from uh, Tiubus Lucian. He says he is also interested in this field and uh, how to link the research center from Kului uh, Napoca. Mm. Uh, from, it's from Romania with the other actors from different countries. I will forward uh, to you, Joao, their, their website. Tubus is providing it here where I can see it, so I'll send it to you. Thank you, Kubus. Uh, I'll forward it to Joao. And you can also directly contact Joao uh, on uh, yes. Yes, that is his my email, contact. yeah, that is his email, so you can contact him directly. And uh, we have um, a question from Olivier Bouchiri. He, the question is about olive oil. Mm -hmm. uh, your olive oil examples, is it made under constraints of official and certified specifications? Is it registered as PDO or PGI? Yes, it is registered as, I don't know the, the translation from Greece, but yes, it is the equivalent there. It's a certified product. Mm, okay. okay. The, the nomination of origin. Yes, protected designation of origin, yes. 
Uh, are there any other questions from our colleagues today? Uh, I don't see any questions coming currently, but again, uh, you can now contact directly Joao and you can visit the European Food Star uh, website where you can see more details about the project and also the trap food project uh, that uh, was the, from which uh, were these examples that we saw today. So thank you very much for your attention and for your patience uh, with the beginning with the slow internet connection. I'm sorry about this. And uh, I hope to see you all, to contact you all again in our next webinars of the European Food Star Project and also in the ISECI Food Association webinars. So thank you very much again for joining us today. Thank you, Joao, for very interesting, very interesting lecture. Thank you, Valicia. Uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you very much and have a good day. We're closing now. Okay, Bye -bye. thank you. Bye.